This channel is supported by Truefire. Truefire is an online library with some of my favourite players. There's thousands of lessons on there. You can use the promo code JNC40 to get 40% off of any of their courses. So, Keith from 5 Watt World sent me a message the other day and he said, I was doing a video on Mark Knopfler, would you be able to do the intro? Now, between you and I, I'm not someone who knows a whole lot about Mark Knopfler, so I'm waiting for Keith's video to drop tomorrow to actually get some insider knowledge on all of that stuff. But I said yes, and uh, of course, the main part of the Mark Knopfler thing is this whole, you know, playing with fingers. And the other part is, and this is something I've wrestled with myself, the second position. Now, when we count positions on a pickup switch, we start at the bridge, that's one, position two, position three, position four, position one. And I know that from Corey Wong's fourth position, which is these two, right? So for Mark Knopfler tones, we're looking at these two together, I think often with a Stratocaster commonly. In terms of the gear that he's used, he seems to me to be one of the very few uh, guitarists out there who has a, a very limited... who has a very limited, been fairly faithful to just a few amount of pedals over his career. One of them seems to be the crowd for hot cake. I hope I'm saying that correctly, otherwise I'll be embarrassed. Uh, correct me in the, in the comments if I'm wrong and an orange Dan Armstrong squeezer, is it? Something like that. And basically, aside from that, he doesn't seem to use a lot of pedals at all. So I'm gonna dive into the Helix now and show you the thing that I came up with for the clean tone. Um, it's not that complicated. Amps that he tended to use, apparently a Fender Twin was in there. I think a Vibralux was in there as well. And then a Soldano Slow 100. And the clean channel of that would be essentially very clean. But for drive tones, I'm not so sure what he would have been doing. But yeah, that Crowther hot cake is part of it, I'm sure. Leave your comments below and let me know about what Mark Knopfler tunes I should know about and I should listen to. I've been listening to a bit of Brothers in Arms to get some inspiration for this stuff and watching some live stuff. Oh, if you want that tone from the introduction, it will be in the description. I'll put it into the folder if anyone actually wants it. Yeah. So, digging in here then, um, I'll actually get rid of this because I'm not exactly sure what we could use to best replicate a cry for hot cake. I've looked online and it doesn't seem to be that any of the major companies have particularly copied it. It was an interesting pedal, it comes from 1976. I may try and get hold of one because it seems like something that quite a few people have used. Leave a comment below if you think of any notable clones or any notable individuals who used a Crowther hot cake. Now, also tell me if I'm saying that completely wrong. Uh, I've turned the gate off at the start of this, and then what we're doing, we're going into a Fender Twin. Now, Mark was known for using a Fender Twin at various points during his career. I think also he used to use a, a Fender Vibralux or something like that, notably. Um, but what we're really looking for is just pristine cleans, right? So I've got the drive at five, bass at 5.6, mids at 5.2, 
treble at 5.7, presence at 4.1, channel volume at 10, master at 7, sag at 5, hum at 5, etc. Now, I'm going into the double C12N, the high cut at 8 kilohertz, using the 120 ribbon uh, 3 inches away, reflections at 45% and level at 4.6. Now, other things that you might consider using would be the Soldano Clean Channel, um, or maybe a Jazz Clean, I think he used the Jazz Chorus at some points, um, but in any case, you, you essentially are wanting something that is quite clean. So uh, we get this, if we're in fourth position, and using fingers, so put your pick away. Right, now, there was some talk about him using a compressor in front of the amp as well, but he also talks about, or some people talked about there being, you know, an amount of production that goes into this in the studio. So I thought, well, let's use a studio compressor, peak reduction at 7.8, gain at 6.2, type compressor, emphasis zero, mix 58%, and level at zero. And with or without, I think this is gonna end up boosting the signal. So it's definitely not, definitely giving us a level boost as well. So that's part of what's making that feel more pleasant with that on. Uh, I also thought if it's a Fender Twin, chances are there was a bit of spring involved. So we're using a 63 spring, 0.7% uh, decay, sorry, and 25% mix, and you get this. Not loads, but... So essentially clean, clean, clean. And then I was listening to a couple of tunes and I did notice that he seems to have quite a lot of like a wide stereo reverb. You could adjust that to taste, but I thought it sounded like quite a rich reverb. Apparently he's a fan of the Br Bricasti, is that how you say that? Um, reverb units, which are incredibly expensive. I've got the dynamic plate here, because it's probably the most expensive sounding reverb on the HX Stomp. 4.6 seconds decay, damping at 3.7 kilohertz, and the mix at 33%. I think everything else is basically as stock. Now, that gives us that tone that you heard. And the other thing that you might want to consider doing is maybe throwing up some sort of compressor up front. Now, I would try the Red Squeeze, but clearly we're a bit limited here in terms of options because I'm using two reverbs. Maybe the Rochester Comp as well might be a good bet just because that's quite a nice bassy kind of compressor. Have I got this in mono? Yes. So what is really chewing up a lot of processing power here is this 63 spring and this dynamic plate. Um, so you could opt for something like the glitz for a bit more of a, an efficient way to run this. If I drop this level, if you want it to be a bit more lively and pop a bit more, maybe keep that level up a bit higher. 
Um. And that was really the, the, what I wanted to make a video on because I thought it's quite a useful um, starting point for a few things. Um, on the Helix, of course, this would be a little bit more useful because you could actually combine lots more things with it. But as I say, if you're finding that you're thinking, right, I want to add some more effects and stuff to this, then maybe it, check out the Glitz delay, that could be relatively similar. And then you might be able to actually fit in distortion or something like that. Um, I'm not again sure what might be the best option for replacing a crowd for cake. Some people said a turbo rat, so let's just try um, see what this does. I'm going to keep that filter fairly high. It seems to me that his drive tones are quite smooth. But yeah, let me know your thoughts in the comments about what you would add to that. Maybe the Ratatouille distortion might be one. Um, maybe. Uh, but in any case, I think probably the starting point for me would be this here. And with that dynamic plate, because we want that posh sounding reverb. And we'd maybe just add in the Rochester comp as an option. Um, if we just take this level down a bit. There's two stock presets that might be valid. This one is loosely based off Sultan's. Uh, obviously named after the Sultans of Swing. And also, there's one which is called Dollar for Nothing, which is obviously based off of the tune Money for Nothing. So give those a try. Let me know if you want me to drop this into the folder. And... Comment below if you've got some Dire Straits tunes that I need to hear before I die. Catch you in another video soon. Cheers.